received a lot of guests, homeopathic medical colleagues from the UK, and particularly to those who've made the long and arduous trip from India. We are honoured by your gracious presence, ladies and gentlemen. I come from a family which has a real problem with conventional mainstream medicine as such, because we're allergic to penicillin and sulfonamides. Hence, we've always used natural medicine and homeopathy in particular. So it was no brainer not to qualify when my path was decided to help people with their health issues. However, as the wonderful late Dr. Samuel Hanneman found out, the medical profession did not take too kindly to the development of this type of medicine. He had to move to various places to establish homeopathy, such as Germany and Paris. He faced the challenges to practice homeopathy, but the safety and efficacy of the system let him practice with confidence and a visionary approach. The tide is changing. From side effects to fatalities, patients opt for safer medicines, such as homeopathy. With around 80,000, and I was absolutely staggered by these numbers, fatalities a year, just from drug side effects, and an NHS budget in 2014 of around 100 billion pounds, which a quarter, some 26 billion pounds, is set aside for medical negligence claims. Patients are waking up. Comparing these figures, with a total spend of 1.75 million on homeopathic medicines within the NHS over the last decade, you just need to take these figures, you know, 100 million pounds in a year compared to 1.75 million pounds in a decade in comparison to homeopathic medicine. Um, it's, it's quite amazing. Um, the figure for homeopathic medicine in 2015 was only 94,300. All these figures can be um, checked through the what doctors don't tell you, the Independent or the Telegraph, and various other news organisations. They're freely available. And obviously we all know homeopathy does not have any fatal side effects. The patients are realising that there is more choice out there and they're demanding it. Also, there has been an increased usage of homeopathy as an add-on therapy in various incurable conditions. Therefore, it is being integrated at par with other systems of medicine. The accusation is often that there is no scientific evidence to prove that homeopathy works. Quite apart from all the research and clinical trials, that are happening in India, not only by our august friends and colleagues represented here, in conjunction with the Ministry of Ayurveda, Yoga, Naturopathy, Vinani, Siddha and Homeopathy, which was set up in um, 2014. Scientists such as Matsuo Emoto, Professor Dr. Van Kruppen and Regine Henschel, Professor Kuda Buksh, Professor Sukul, Professor Bell, Professor Bellavite, plus the French virologist and Nobel Prize winner, Luc Montagnier, have proven without doubt that homeopathy is scientific and it works. The voices of the anti-homeopathy movement are beginning to struggle. We are now fortunate in that the British government has acknowledged the use of homeopathy and also of some, not all, other forms of complementary medicine. The importance of this parliamentary statute is undoubtedly to first and foremost protect the public from unsafe practice, as is ours, of course, it has to be. And this has been underpinned by the DH White Paper Trust Assurance and Safety, the Regulation of Health Professionals, which was released on the 21st of February 2007, some 10 years ago. I'm sure that other countries can take the lead on this legislation from the UK government and will endorse their government's review and implement them accordingly. Incidentally, Mr. Stephen Gordon, General Secretary of the European Central Council of Homeopaths, whom I saw recently, sends his best wishes to the RSH UK and a wonderful success. All of these points are placing the RHF, RSH sorry, in a strong and supportive position, especially in terms of good practice, safety for the public from exceptionally well-qualified homeopaths, and an excellent accountability together with CPT training for its practitioners.
The fact that we're here at the RSA UK can take these recommendations forward in the teaching of homeopathy, not only within the UK but also globally, is something to be truly proud of and grateful for, particularly in view with these aims being supported by government's thinking on the present health policy, despite the elections tomorrow. Personally, I see this as a very exciting start to a long and amazing journey at the right time. Speaking of journeys, for those who took the long trip from the Indian subcontinent, I extend a personal invitation to come and join us in this healing adventure. So please, join me in wishing the Registration Society of Homeopathy UK every success for its future development globally. Thank you. Now we're going to do the floral welcomes. So, Dr. Bakshi, please to welcome our chief guest, Mr. Stephen Fry. Thank you very much. Could we just have a photograph? is an inspiring tale, sprawling manufacturing facilities, large unit clinics and a homeopathy college today. Baxon is a force to reckon with, not just in India, but the world over. Who is the visionary behind this endeavor? Who is he to take the crew to this pinnacle of success? He is Dr. S.P.S. Bakshi, 
educationist, entrepreneur, and a visionary who has turned his father's dreams into reality. My inspiration is from my father, Dr. Kripal Sambakshi. My father always said, in India, in lack quality manufacturing, quality education, and the most important thing here, he used to say, we are lacking in research. The visible difference between Vex and other companies are very simple, that we are very strict with quality. Quality is a constant effort. Cost is forgiven when the quality is remembered forever. One should not compromise with original species. We should be very clear, Earth should be of that quality with which the original brewery was done. We were the first company to get extra little alcohol license. We did not compromise and the same alcohol in, in uh, making multi -inches. All our products are clinically tried on thousands of patients before bringing it out in the market. As the Vice Chairman Board of Homeopathic System of Medicine and the first elected President of Central Council of Homeopathy for 18 and a half years, Dr. S.P.S. Pakshi hasn't just taken vaccine to the acne of success, but has spread the goodness of homeopathy to millions. And his efforts have been widely recognized and awarded. A single man's determination and dream has been translated into reality by the man himself and his core team. Dexon is a 25 year old old group and uh, it has a uh, brand name. Our expected growth should be around 25%. We have about two manufacturing units, one at uh, Chinu, that is the Machi Protein, the other one is uh, at uh, Rukhi. If need be, then we will not hesitate to come on the third floor. With one last square feet area each, the manufacturing facilities are equipped to handle every demand. Extensive training ensures personnel remain up to date. Baxon's modern manufacturing facilities and procedures comply with international standards. It is an ISO 9001-2008 and GMP certified company. It is registered with the US FDA as a foreign manufacturer. Baxon strictly adheres to the pharmacopoeial standards for procuring medicine to cater to the growing requirements of value-added medicines. Maintains written specifications that describe the homeopathic medicine and the required test methods for specifications pertaining to identity, purity, quantity, potency and tolerances. <coughs> and also follows conventional testing protocols for each dosage form. The finished product specifications control the organoleptic and physical characteristics of the product. It has well-equipped quality control laboratory of class 1000 with modular furniture including GLC microbiology and sterility area. It applies TQM techniques and follows fully autonomous functionality. With our in-house QC and R&D efforts, we have developed standards for each individual ingredients. The laboratory has all the basic equipment for physical chemical analysis, extraction, chemical analysis, assay of chemical compounds by volumetric, gravimetric, spectrophotometric, GLC and TLC techniques. Thin layer chromatography facility for fingerprinting of the herbal medicine or the marker compounds are available for confirming the identity and authenticity of the medicine. There is a unidirectional flow of pen and material action. Keeping abreast with the latest and high precision technology, Baxon has incorporated the use of automatic potentizer to ensure standardized dynamization of higher potencies with digital control. It is an easy to operate equipment that enables to raise 900 potencies per head in one time operation. The packing of potencies is done strictly under laminar airflow to overcome even infinitesimal chances of particulate contamination. The HEPA filter removes nearly all of the radiation from the E. coli in each tablet. Ingredients are well mixed. Compressed tablets are exerted to great pressure in order to compact the material. The tablets are tested for ash value, disintegration time, hardness, 
viability before being packed. <laughs> Manufacturing of ornaments is done by homogenizers and planetary mixers through fully automatic plant and then a range of requisite tests including pH, water content, total fatty acids and microbiological ones are done. The goodness of homeopathy has been translated into an entire range of beneficial cosmetics and beauty products. Nature has everything in a fine balance and that precision is what we are aiming for in Paxson. We have uh, around 750 distributors for the mix Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka and Malaysia, Singapore etc. A lot of input has been done into research for uh, generic medicines. We need further research into a combination medicines so that we are able to incorporate them into our material medica. At Vaxin we have been doing it not only for our own products but uh, we are trying to reach out to certain other factors which are yet unexplored in more the field of medicine, especially the efficacy part. We would definitely like to pick up the end from here and carry on this research and not uh, sleep over the things which have been done. Currently we have about 36 clinics and uh, a few more are in the pipeline right now. Getting ready for tomorrow, a visionary takes the dream forward and as he dreams, he is not alone. As he forges ahead, there are hundreds in his footsteps. We have a very good congenial atmosphere here in the campus so that we can achieve it. excellence in education. It's a non profitable institution. This is not my college. This is the college of every moment. And this is a gift to the nation. I have a desire and a dream that such institute we should start in, in Europe or in the USA. Vaxxon is again the leading homeopathy company in India of Indian origin. India is a superpower in homeopathy today. We have more than 3 lakh institutionally qualified homeopaths. Another 5 to 10 years homeopathy will become a very strong force to recommend. If homeopathy is growing, we all manufacturers grow and those manufacturers who are very conscious about the quality will accept. As you climb higher and higher, things are becoming more difficult in terms of market share, turnover. But that is a challenge one has to accept. And we are fully prepared as Baxon to accept this challenge. Baxon homeopathy, a ring of hope, a way of health. Now uh, we invite uh, Bakshi Sir to come on the dais and say a few words about one of the key and of this speech. So. Good evening everybody. You see we are <coughs> family of We are three generations in community. My father late Dr. Tripal Singh Bakshi at the age of 32 left government job. With two children he went to study homeopathy in Calcutta. There was only one college that time in 1947. At the age of 36 when he started his practice in a very private manner and became a very successful homeopath. He always felt that in three, three areas, especially in education, because he was a professor and head of the Department of Medical Medica in Nehru Medical, Medical College, he felt education needs to be improved. He felt the manufacturing needs to be improved in India. And as a child, I used to hear all those things. In those days, from Calcutta in, in India, they used to make biochemic with hand. They used to, they used to turn yellow. And these small things which I kept on learning and listening to him, I had, and I have tremendous respect for my father. So I decided <coughs> one day I would fulfill his dream. And luckily, I went into education 
I was <coughs> vice chairman and daily board and then became the chairman of Central Council of Homeopathy. When I joined as the first president of the council, you see, the Central Council is a body which controls education in India. There were 84 colleges that time. And I was very young that time, and uh, in my tenure, we had <coughs> 110 new colleges which came. And wherever I had gone, I've seen our colleges were in good numbers, but again, the quality was not there. When I talk about quality, especially the quality of clinical exposure, the theoretical part is very good. We are learning from each other online by reading and homeopathy is today getting popular is, is because of the homeopathy lovers. People are running away from the side effects of allopathy. All the leading manufacturing companies in India and abroad are running because of the homeopathy lovers, not because of the doctors. They come and buy equivalent brain and have some small medicines which they use it at home. And after realizing the, the potential of homeopathy, when I was coming out of Central Council after working for 18 and a half years, I decided to start Baxter Homeopathy Medical College in, 19, in 2001 the land was acquired. And whatever I fought, felt the shortcomings in other colleges, I said I will try to improve upon them. This movie is very old. This movie is about seven years, eight years old. Today our infrastructure is very strong. When I say strong, I realized that we need to increase the patients in our, in our hospital. So we opened we took 10 villages near our premises and we had 16 we have 16 medical officers stationed there our students are going to this OPDs and to my surprise we touched 1000 patients every day so this was a very good clinical exposure to the students and then we foot moved far forward we started working in IBD. Today we see about 30 to 40 patients in our hospital. And very shortly we are developing one section into Skin and Allergy Institute. Why this Skin and Allergy? Because India is a tropical country. Our 80% of our patients are from, from autoimmune disorders. That is allergies. Even all the doctors are sitting here they will witness what I am saying. That allergies, according to me, is, is hereditary. It runs in the families of the patient in the form of skin. And whenever you have skin problems, you want to have respiratory. Skin and respiratory, it runs simultaneously and it keeps on shifting. And second area is stomach and arthritis. They are both connected. All these four areas are called endogenic areas allergy, hereditary allergies and luckily I have been able to do a lot of research and see up more than 15 lakh patients in my 44 years of practice. We see what in our clinic for 800 patients in Delhi, 1000 in college, then uh, Mr. Har Sunny gave he said we must take this to London. And this was my also desire because there is not a single college which has good clinical exposure. So what we plan to do is, in a small manner we started our, we are going to start the college and the practical training we are going to give them in India. So they get, we have about 30 rooms, we have already made very nice rooms, studio apartments. Our auditorium is getting ready, our 10th of April on Hanukkah's birthday. This very nice auditor, about 400 students can sit there. Will be inaugurated, and we'll call you also from here. And we are going to take 10 more villages. So our target is to see 50,000 patients every month in that area. There's no shortage of patients. I'm telling you. 
those villages where we are working, the aeroplanes they come to our clinic, they say, you have started this clinic, our practice has gone down. They want to learn homeopathy. And there are three, there are three lakh sixty-one thousand villages in India where homeopathy needs to go. And I'm very confident a day is not far. Homeopathy will become the first line of treatment among masses. Surprisingly, when I came here today, three students from my college, Baxton College, they're practicing here. I have one doctor, Dr. Subita Mahajan, she called me here for yesterday. She has worked with them for seven years in, in Delhi. She's also here. And homeopathy recognized. So we may expand this venture of clinics also with the help of this young doctors because you have to be trained in a particular manner to treat how to take history and the theory of shifting especially in allergies will be very good I'm telling you our success rate in allergies is almost 90 percent and eczema psoriasis lichenbrenis all our doctors are very competent to control this asthma bronchitis tonsillitis is a very simple problem so what I want to say is that there's a ray of hope we have started a very humble uh, way in this college, but our effort is going to be very, very honest and sincere effort is going to be there. And I always feel, my guru has taught me, always start from zero. Don't make it big. If it has to grow, it will grow. And I have, I have always said, plan not, but fit into the plans of God. And five years, six years back when he started import of Baxter to this country, it was very small, humble uh, import. And today we are going to register about 80 products, spend more than one crore in registration itself. We find a good future of homeopathy in Europe. I wish that after me also, this work should be carried on. Because homeopathy came from Europe, from Germany. And it was no more there, but I'm very happy to see that there are 3,000 homeopaths practicing in the United Kingdom today. Homeopathy is recognized, it is very easy for us to uh, expand here. I wish you join us from India, from the United Kingdom, so that our mission is complete. And as I said earlier, homeopathy should become the first line of treatment. With these words, nothing more to add. Thank you very much. These are the glimpses of the text and the medical college of Britain are here. Sure. Sure.
very inspiring video, Dr. Bakshi. Good evening, everyone. Respected and honorable guests, colleagues, and friends, on behalf of the London College of Homeopathy, I welcome you all once again, and especially our friends and colleagues who have traveled that great distance from India to be here and from all over the country to join us here today on this very, very special occasion. And as Dr. Bakshi has remembered his father, I'd like us to take an opportunity to remember who inspired the original Hanuman College in this country. Dr. Yara Singh, who I had the privilege of studying under many years ago. And uh, our beloved Sunny, who I'm going to ask to wave to us, so everyone who isn't too sure, this is the son of Dr. Piara Singh. It was his passion to have homeopathy in this country, not just to treat people, but to have an education system where people here could also study. And whilst we've been reminded that it came originally from Germany, it was very much here that Dr. Piara Singh introduced homeopathy to many, many thousands of people. And like his elder brother, Dr. Gurnam Singh from Patiala, he was passionate about the treatment, the therapy, and the wonders that it produced on all those people that he treated. And even more passionate about attaining recognition, he wanted the Indian homeopaths to have acknowledgement <coughs> of what they studied. He came here in the late 1960s to complete his postgraduate education at the Royal London Homeopathic College under the famous Dr. Marjorie Blackie, who was at that time the homeopathic physician to the royal family. Many of you will already know this, and Dr. Blackie was the first homeopathic physician to treat our beloved Queen Elizabeth. And her uncle by marriage was James Compton Burnett. Dr. Piara Singh was successful in establishing that college, the Hanuman College of Homeopathy, in the 1980s. And we are overwhelmed by some of the attendance of those original students who are here today, far, far back from the 1980s, which seems a long time ago now. Uh, can we just have a show of hands of who is here from that original? Well, several here, a few. Lovely, lovely. Thank you, welcome. <laughs> and I, Dr. Osher, of course. We are so honoured to welcome Dr. S.P.S. Bakshi, a man also passionate about spreading this wonderful, wonderful treatment. Delhi, this is where he's been teaching institutes, colleges, and as we had that wonderful example of over 30, 30 clinics. One of the benefits of the collaboration with Buxton's Institute is that vast collection of not only academic, has been said, but also the clinical experience. And that is what is so greatly lacking in the training in this country for homeopathy, that clinical experience of actually seeing patients hands on. Generally here, we see the patients when they've been through a whole ream of treatments, and we get the very, very chronic cases. But to have the experience of acute cases as well to treat will be something quite remarkable for the students here. We're also privileged to work with a talented and dedicated group of individuals like Dr. Sunny Bakshi, his colleagues Dr. Sandeep Kaila and Dr. Saurav Aurora. They're all fully full of a vitality and a passion and a promise that some of that passion shown by Dr. Piara Singh all those years ago will bring a fruition now in a new beginning of that homeopathic awareness. This collaboration with Baxons will also broaden the course offerings here and provide the opportunity for clinical training in India and within the UK for qualifying students and homeopaths. And I'm sure, as I've said, we all know the importance of that. Our fundamental mission at this college, <coughs> the London College of Homeopathy, is to provide access to quality homeopathy and a quality education for all who seek it. And with the help of Baxton's Institute, 
we really do look forward to what lies ahead. Thank you all very much. Now I'd like to uh, invite our chief guest, Mrs. Stephen Fry. Esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen, what a privilege, uh, what a pleasure, um, what a remarkable gathering, and what a remarkable celebration. Um, I am not lost in the irony that 20 metres that way is the headquarters of one of the biggest pharmaceutical businesses at the opposition uh, in, in, in the world. Um, uh, they happen to be good friends of Council and Chamber of Commerce, so we'll leave that comment just where it sits. Um, but I hope also. Uh, for, for the Registration Society of Homeopathy UK also to be a good friend uh, to Hounslow Chamber of Commerce and also the London College of Homeopathy equally to join us uh, as good friends in serving our community here in West London. Some of you have come an unbelievably long way uh, to eat scones covered in jam and cream upstairs on the 11th floor, overlooking the flight path of Heathrow. And indeed, I've come an incredibly long way, which the bus actually took me seven <laughs> minutes from our office, just up the Great West Road, and it was a privilege to ride the bus, but a better privilege to be here. We are here in the University of West London. Uh, the University of West London is one of our commercial business partners. Because we believe wholeheartedly as a chamber that growth can only come through knowledge and information and dissemination and sharing of best practice. And that knowledge starts here and ends here in a full circle with our businesses and our colleges and our colleagues and our friends in business, and now with you. And I welcome you to that circle of growth. But I do find it quite funny, um, having spent three years at university, where I learned uh, a great deal of Latin, uh, an awful lot of Hebrew, no Punjabi, uh, and an awful lot of uh, Greek, uh, that similia similibus currentor properly translated actually means let similar things take care of similar things. And I get the feeling because I was trying to find what the collective noun for a gathering of homeopaths would be. Well I guess the best way I can explain it, you would be a currental, you would be a carer, you would be a curing body. And so let's stick to the Latin, welcome as a parental. We in Hounslow disrupt. Um, we came deliberately as businesses to disrupt. I've been here six years as a disruptor. Um, and I believe that actually you as a parental are disruptors too. You are challenging. You are asking simple but sensible and accurate questions. You are asking the established way of thinking. Are you right? Now just because it's been general practice, and I use that term loosely, to do things in a particular way over a particular period of time, over many years, does that mean now we still have to do things in exactly the same way? Well, disruptive strategies are not popular with established markets, be they commercial markets, 
be they public markets or be they health and medical care markets. When established methods continue to fail, and they do fail, trust me, we need to stop making excuses for that failure and look for real alternatives. In economics, something I know quite a bit about, homeopathy, I don't, but economics I do, uh, the age-old solution of fighting high inflation with high interest rates is, has been the agreed norm for decades. Why? Well, because it's a classical cure. However, after the crash of 2008, we, in this country at least, have enjoyed really low interest rates and really low inflation rates. Why is that? <coughs> well, because the original, classical, traditional cures for our economy actually well, they didn't work. So we are now discovering a new economics, a new way of thinking about our economies. So much for the established economic view. <coughs> so why is it we, people, insist on sticking to solutions that actually don't work? It's often the case that we demand much higher levels of proof from the disruptors than those which are proven in the status quo. You don't just have to prove that homeopathy works. You have to prove that homeopathy works and continues to work and will work and continue to work time and time and time again when actually classical methods of treatment have long since failed. So you do, as a disruptor, have to prove the extra bit. So you do have to demonstrate that you are more right than right. And that's where it gets complicated and difficult. So it's with homeopathy. During conversations with health professionals, hopefully those health professionals with an open mind, it's found that homeopathy seems to have an answer. But not an answer that is the established structure of answers, nor that the establishment seems to approve or agree. It is therefore essential that you, you, you as a body, you as the curenta, actually ensure that your structures are sound, that your educators are solid, that your manufacturing processes are perfect beyond possible doubt, and that you undertake more research than you can possibly ever be expected to achieve because you have to prove it time and time again to the doubters. It is in any disruption. And any good disruptor must undertake that continual research and similarly disseminate this information. Now the RSH UK has got form here and they're down here as the objectives. <coughs> to recognise and regulate the professional standards of members by virtue of membership or fellowship. There's no point saying you have a high quality of practitioner if you do not make that regulation rigid and that there is an opportunity to say look how good and look how professional we actually are. That really is essential. And that's something that the RSH UK does and certainly something that the London College is doing as part of its brief here in the UK. You have to recognise educational institutions of homeopathy. Recognise it. And it's located here in the UK and in other parts of the world. 
it is essential that you create this curator around the world globally. This group of carers, this entrusted group of people with an alternative solution to the ills of humankind. You have to promote and support facilities for the education of people, keen to learn homeopathy and biochemic systems of medicine in the UK. Absolutely crucial. How many practitioners are there in the UK? Do we know? 3,000. 3,000? That's what was said earlier. 3,000. Well, maybe in a year's time, with good luck and a, down, and a wind and downhill and the work of the London College, that would be 6,000. And the message needs to be sold. It needs to be sold as a success of professionalism. Because it's down to you now to organise seminars and conferences. And with our help, we'll help. Of course we will. Nationally and internationally. For supporting the dissemination of authentic, authentic homeopathic practices. <coughs> Absolutely crucial. Because the authentic rigour, the demonstrable requirement of a registration, an organisation, makes you above repute. You have to go the extra mile to prove who you are. You have to establish a code of ethics to maintain high professional standards of practice among qualified homeopathic practitioners. All key objectives here. You don't want the charlatans. You want the people that have studied hard, that know their practice, that know their craft and are actually able and willing to offer their skills for the benefit of humankind. You need to publish a directory of qualified practitioners so that people who do not know what homeopathy is about can go and find out. And it's more, trust me, it's more than just a website. You have to go out and ensure people are talking about you. You have to provide free homeopathic consultations. As hard as that's going to be, you have to establish charitable clinics and arrange free camps for the awareness of homeopathy. It's all about getting the story out there. Something that started in Germany so many years ago seems to have bypassed the UK. It seems to have bypassed most of Western Europe. So it's about time we brought the story back. At least give people the option, the alternative, to have a choice. And in raising public awareness and acceptance of homeopathy, you are creating internationally a safe and effective system of medicine and treatment. So the critics can look in, but they cannot criticise. You are disruptors. Disrupt. Go and do it.
Habiz Parte. is uh, the head of the MLDL community uh, training, yes, no, which is a very big Isabel Grafman Grafman. Thank you. Oh, yeah. It is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Okay, here we go. Thank you.
Funny story about Sunil. I once said I used to be a teacher with the ball club, and he was a student at our college, and now we are his students at badminton. <laughs> the roles are reversed. And <laughs> yoga. Zafar Bashir. That concludes our presentation. Thank you very much. I have been given the opportunity to offer my book. The, book, the name of my book is Selection of Potency in Homeopathic Practice. So I, at this occasion, I want to offer this book to Mr. Bush. You want to stand there? Let's see the back of there. No, no. I'm too tall, actually. No, no, no. I thought I'll make work. Yeah, this is the book. That's it. That's it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 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 Now to uh, closing, all the good things come to an end. But before we end, I would like to just, um, if we could, just have a minute, minute of silence to mark the um, respect for what's happened in this country over the last few months. So if we could just close our eyes for a minute and give our thoughts and prayers all those that are struggling with what's happened, not only in this country, but around the globe that is happening today. And if we could offer our thoughts of peace and unity. Okay, so <coughs> we can in silence. Thank you. Unfounded criticisms. This 
especially here in the UK. However, I'm York the remains the second largest system of medicine practiced throughout the world. It's only by our individual and collective efforts will homeopathy grow and prosper. And as we come to a close, our gratitude goes back to all of you for your support for the homeopathic course. And we wish you all a safe and pleasant journey to our respective homes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.